Shoot from the heart. Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> I think that I should just stop at that. Shoot from the heart. I think um, would be the best. You know, I think um, it really doesn't matter. You know, I like to take good quality photographs. I like to try and have the light a certain way and the person stand a certain way. Even though it's all very natural, it happens very quickly. I work very quickly and work with what I'm given. Um, I don't really pose the people or anything. I just kind of work with who I think that person is. But what I think um, the, the honesty of it is, I think people like to live vicariously. I mean, it's the whole idea of this reality TV. They like to live vicariously through other people and, and see other people's ideas and other people's take on the world. So whether you're taking it with just a little digital camera, if you're actually taking pictures that uh, mean something to you in a real way and you actually have something to say, people will follow that blog. You know, because you'll find like-minded people. Um, but by doing that, I think, you know, one of the things that separates me is, you know, I don't shoot just all 20-year-old hipsters. You know, I shoot old and young, and, and that, that brand comes across in the variety of people I shoot because I actually have something to say. And I can do that as opposed to saying one thing over and over. It gives me a, a wider vocabulary to be able to shoot people in a lot of different ways and a lot of different types of people, but you always know it's one of my shots. And that's because, you know, I take it very seriously. And, uh, and I have a real passion about it. I have a real point of view. And uh, so I think, you know, that's what someone has to do. They, before just deciding, oh, I think I want to go out and take pictures of people on the street, I think they really have to have a point of view. You know, it's very important what I don't shoot as opposed to what I do shoot. There's a lot of people in the fashion business I've never shot. Um, so without a, a real passionate point of view, I don't think there's anything you can do. Because then it just becomes a, 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 a report on product. And there's a lot of blogs like that, and I think they're incredibly boring. You know, just a report of what's out there uh, doesn't do anything for me. Well, passion and a point of view, number one. Uh, consistency. You know, you have to be able to create a consistent voice because if you're blogging, in a real way, you know, uh, I think it, you have to do it very regularly. If it's not five days a week or six days a week, in a way that people start to know when they can come see your blog, um, when there's going to be new images up. Not always, it doesn't have to be exactly the same time every day. You know, it's not so bad to keep them guessing. Not so bad to have them coming back once or twice. But there has to be a consistency in the voice um, because you just can't fake it five days a week. Um, so I think that's really important, uh, I think, the next generation of blogs is going to be just like the beginning of, we of websites. You know, you could kind of do it on your own and kind of have it, and it didn't look great necessarily. But now, you know, blogs are getting very sophisticated, and uh, I think people are going to have to really start to be serious about the way the blog looks. And it's you know the days I think of um, just being able to steal images from all over the place to put them on your blog and just putting another two cents in on somebody else's conversation. It's pretty close to over. Because the blog's not going to be able to grow that way. The blog is only going to be able to grow once you're in control of all the content. And I think that's why street style blogs have grown so quickly is, you know, we're in control of the visuals. We're in control of the writing. You know, if you're using a particular kind of blog, you can be more in control of the, of the fonts and the graphics and everything else. I don't know. You can't really do anything. You know, I mean, at least for me, anyway. Because, um, you know, it's so many different things, you know. I mean... It's the clothes themselves, it's the person, uh, it's, uh, I just have to, you know, that's the artist. You know, there's no, if, I wish I could say as a marketer, well, you know, if you're wearing this brand and blah, 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 um, that will make it really interesting, but it's not. You know, that's the artist in me. You know, sometimes you meet someone and there's just something that clicks, you know, and it might be an obvious kind of beauty or uh, a non-obvious kind of beauty or just something that you feel. You know, I shot this woman in... Um, in Barcelona the other day, this beautiful older woman, and she, you know, really beautifully aged face and very perfectly done hair and fur coat, and, um, you know, she was definitely not typical traditional beauty, but there was just something so um, charming about her. And I don't think she'd end up on anybody else's blog, but, you know, that, that is definitely part of my vocabulary. And I'm sure she didn't get up that day thinking, what should I wear to be shot by the sartorialist? I know he's in town. Um, but, you know, that's the fun of it. You know, you just never know. There are people I see all the time that you would think, mm, you know, maybe be on the blog, but if I don't feel something, 
and don't feel that I'm going to be able to shoot it the way that I want, then it doesn't really matter. But all black is pretty boring. If you're going to do all black, you better do some good proportion or texture or something like that. Color, pattern, things like that, that actually real elements of design uh, are always a good, good place to start. Mm -hmm.